look at the state of you. This is why novice adventurers are warned to stay away. But there's always somebody who thinks they're stronger than they really are. You were absolutely torn to pieces. Where's the head? Ugh, I hope it's not missing. Ah, there you are. Ugh. Barely any of the faces left. Oh well, I don't need you to be pretty. Let's get to reanimating! Here's hoping your spirit hasn't moved on. Though with a traumatic death like this, I doubt that could happen. Are you with me? Are you back in your body? Uh, well, are, are you in your head? Your body's over there. And there. And who knows where the rest is. Hmm. Well, you can move your jaw at least. But I'm not hearing any actual words. Oh, what am I saying? You don't have any lungs or vocal cords at the moment. Of course you can't say anything. We'll have to figure that out in a second. Good news is that I've reanimated enough corpses to already know all the questions you want to ask, so I'll handle a few of those before I get to work. First, yes, you did die. I wasn't there to see it, but it was clearly violent and gruesome. I'm a necromancer, and I've reanimated your brain, which thankfully hasn't been damaged too much. And yes, necromancy is forbidden in every nation worth living in. I don't personally care. And you should be grateful that I don't. I'm gonna stitch you back together until you're more or less as good as new. Let's see, what do they usually ask next? Oh, you're not a zombie. Not technically, anyway. Zombies, skeletons, that sort of thing, don't have free will or memories. Necromancers make those by taking a tiny fragment of soul, either theirs or someone else's, and putting it in a corpse. Those things can only follow orders, nothing more. You're different. Your soul was still near your body, unable to pass to the afterlife due to the trauma you experienced. I tethered your soul back to your body so you retain all your memories and personality. That makes you a white. Next would be... Ugh, this is annoying. Let me see if I can get you to talk. I think I have a spare set of lungs somewhere. Ah, this'll do for now. This'll be a temporary fix until I can repair your body enough for use. Unless... Hmm. I think your real lungs are actually gone. So, these can stay. You still don't have vocal cords, but you can at least whisper. How's that? Good, good. Whoever did this to you didn't rip out your tongue at least. So, what's your name? Hmm, a bit generic. We can probably do better. I'll call you Gath. You know, like a mistake? Because you definitely made a mistake coming here. You're right! I'm not doing this out of charity, Gaff. Necromancers need minions, and that's exactly what you're going to be. It's true. You still have your free will, so I can't force you to obey me. That's why most necromancers settle for zombies. But I need some minions who can think for themselves and give orders to my lesser minions. Well, for starters, you should obey me because your only other choice is death. Your soul is strapped to your body by my power alone, and I can release your soul at any time. Aside from that, I have big plans. You get to be part of something important by serving me. We can discuss my grand scheme later. If you have a problem with it, I'll just release your soul right now. Yeah, that's what I figured. I'm going to start sewing your body back together. Do you want to watch, or should I turn your head the other way? Hm. 
brave one, huh? That's good. As you can imagine, undead people who are squeamish tend to be, well, miserable. Okay, let's take stock of what we have. Torso is in pretty bad shape, but it's not hopeless. You don't really need most of your internal organs anyway, now that you're undead. You're definitely gonna need a lot of stitches there, though. As for limbs, one leg is mostly attached. The other one is, uh... Ah, right here. Well, it's just bones now, pretty much. Still usable to an undead, but you'll walk with a limp. I found your right arm near the entrance, which is what drew me in here in the first place. Lots of bite marks, but otherwise pretty okay. How about the left? Oh, here it is. Well, the upper arm anyway. I don't see the rest anywhere. I hope you're not a lefty. Well, let's start stitching. This hole in the front of your torso is actually pretty convenient, so I'm going to leave it for now. I have a few things to stick in your body cavity in a minute. The throat is... Man. If I tried to sew all that back together, it'd be more thread than flesh. We'll have to go artificial. Probably for the best, actually. Beheading is one of the easiest ways to deal with an undead. If I make the whole neck out of something sturdier, that should make you that much tougher. So, while I'm working on you, who exactly are you, Gaff? I assume you're an adventurer of some kind? Really? The Gertrude of Adana is your mother? That's quite a claim to fame. So what's the kid of a famous warrior doing dead in a mid-level monster dungeon? Well, I guess there's a lot of pressure on someone of your pedigree to make a name for themselves. I guess I can see why you jumped in the deep end. The name Gaff is still fitting, though. <laughs> okay, the torso's all in one piece. And now? Hmm? No, the head goes on last. You can't feel pain anymore, but new undead still tend to shy away from needles in the flesh out of habit. You won't hold still if I reattach your head now. Limbs are next. This will be way easier than the torso, thank goodness. As for your left arm, I can get you a whole bunch of neat prosthetics. I don't have those with me, but there are some fun ones back at my place. Oh, you know, aside from just a normal hand, there's a classic hook, a sword, and a hammer. I think I might have some other ones too. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I've had a lot of practice sewing bodies together. <laughs> you want to know the funny thing, though? Before I was a necromancer, I was a tailor. Yeah, that's part of why I bother with corpses like yours that are in really bad shape. It's a lot of work, but most corpses aren't good enough to reanimate without repair, so this makes it a lot easier to find the ones I need. Most other necromancers have to either have a few good minions or a bunch of barely functional ones. Oh yeah, there are way more of us than you'd expect. Just because something's taboo doesn't mean people won't do it. Some necromancers do it because it's taboo. Those are the really edgy ones that call themselves Lord of Death or the Undying. No, I'm more pragmatic. I'm in the necromancy business because there's something I want to do. Okay. Limbs are all good. Or as good as they're gonna get anyway. Just one more thing to do. I figured out a few artificial organs that help undead function better. That's where this big ol' hole in your chest is gonna come in handy. First of all, you're gonna have this bile sac. It works a bit like your liver and kidneys, but specialized for an undead. It's gonna slowly replace your blood with bile. Of course, most of your blood is already gone anyway. Bile keeps you from getting stiff. All my minions have the bile sac, but only my whites get this special occult organ. It's enchanted with some of my magic, 
You'll be able to control my minions more easily thanks to this. Though you won't be able to turn them against me. There! I'm gonna unattach your lungs for just a second so I can put them in here. And finally, the head. You'll get control of your body before I finish, so try to hold still even after you start to feel your body. And done! So, how do you feel? Yeah, it's not the same as being alive. But it's better than being dead, right? Good! Now, follow me, we're going home. I have a lot of big plans for you, Gaff. You're really gonna be part of something incredible! <laughs>